Hello everyone, welcome to another Quad Education Test Prep Fundamentals video. My name is Tom and today we're talking about another one of those classic ACT and SAT math topics that you absolutely need to have in your equation toolkit if you want to be successful on these tests. It's also, yet again, one of those topics with a lot of capacity for overcomplication, but also, once again, you'll see that if you approach it the right way, it's really not that bad. That topic is trigonometry, so let's take a look. Okay, trigonometry. So in this video, we're going to just do some basic trig. And then in the next video, I'm going to do a bit more interesting stuff on the law of cosines and sines, which is to do with non-right angle triangles. So if all of this that I'm about to talk about here feels a bit familiar, I'd say stick around and watch uh, maybe just at one and a half speed so that you just make sure that my vocab is synced up with your vocab here. In any event, starting from the beginning, we have a nice, clean right angle triangle. So a little naming convention here first. So we're going to name the vertices of this right triangle, which the vertices are just the angles. Um, so we're going to say this is A right here, B right here, and C right there. Now, what do we call the side opposite of B right here? So the side opposite of angle B, what do we call that? Well, your instinct may be to call this line right here, line AC. And you wouldn't be wrong, but AC is like twice as many letters as B, and I always like to be lazy here, and I hope that you also appreciate that. So let's try to do a little bit better. And so the naming convention with triangles, since any angle will always only ever have one opposite side, we can actually name that just whatever that vertex is. So vertex, vertices and angles are always uppercase letters, and the opposite will always be a lowercase letter. So that's just little b right there. And right away, I've saved you 50% effort, so you're welcome. And so now let's just sort of fill out this right triangle so we know all of the angles and all of the sides. So we have uppercase B here and lowercase b. This opposite side here is going to be lowercase a, and opposite of C is going to be lowercase c. And so since C is lowercase c is opposite the right angle, that means that it must be the hypotenuse. So the nice thing about a triangle, there's only 180 degrees, and so the largest angle must always be opposite the largest side, which in this case will always be opposite the 90. So that's just going to be the hypotenuse right there. And so let's talk about trigonometry, so trigonometric properties. And, and we're only going to cover really three here today. Those are going to be sine, cosine, and tangent. And so really what trig properties are, trig identities are, is basically just relationships of sides to angles. And so the first one we can go ahead and talk about is the sine of an angle. And so I'm going to use the convention theta here. It just means an angle theta degrees, whatever, the sine of an angle is going to always be the opposite of that angle divided by the hypotenuse. And I'll have this written down in text in a minute here to keep it nice and legible. But really what's going on is, let's just take an example. Let's look at angle B down here. And so what side is opposite of B? Well, just for clarity, we just defined, we just talked about the definition of the side. It's the opposite of the angle, so that's just B. And we also just defined what the hypotenuse was. That's just going to be lowercase c right there. And next we're going to talk about the next identity, which is going to be cosine. So it's just sine with CO in front of it, but we usually just write it as COS because it's fewer letters. We like that. The cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent to the angle divided by the hypotenuse. And adjacent is just a fancy math word for next to. So if we were to think about the cosine of angle B, well, the side next to it, and the adjacent can't be the hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is the hypotenuse. So there's only one side that's next to angle B, and that is side A. And the hypotenuse is still side C. And then the last identity is going to be the tangent of an angle, which is just going to be the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And in the case of angle B, that's going to be side B divided by side A. And so those are all of the three properties that we're going to look at today. And so now, as promised, here are those identities just with a little bit more legible handwriting. And so the next thing to think about is, you know, we've done a lot of letters and it's a lot of theory, but what about a couple of numbers? So let's just fill in something familiar, and let's pretend that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this would be the 60 side, 
this would be the 30 side, and then clearly that would be the 90 side over there. And if you rewind to my video from a long time ago about special triangles, you'll know that this side right here is x, the long side is 2x, and then the short side is going to be x root 3. And so let's just go ahead and call those the numbers that they would be, which is if they were values, which is 1, root 3, and 2. And so then we look at that, it's like, let's say we did the cosine of 60 degrees. Well, our 60 degree angle is right here, and that's going to be the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And that's going to be 1 over 2. So if you're wondering why the cosine of 60 degrees was 1 half, there it is. And sort of the final thing to talk about here is the trigonometry noise, like the call of the trigonometry, which is so ka toa. And where that comes from is just the sine equals the opposite of our hypotenuse, S O H. The cosine is the A over the H. And the toa is the T equals the O over the A. And this noise, this battle cry of the trigonometry is the mnemonic device that people use to remember what each of these identities signifies. So Sokotoa, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent equals opposite over adjacent. And that's just a great way to remember it. It's just such a catchy noise. And so now let's take a look at some example problems and see if we can apply these principles. Okay, here are our example problems. We're going to look at one at a time, see what we can do with this first one. Okay, let's take a look. It says rectangle BCDE is shown above. What is the sine of angle BDE? So that's going to be this right here. So we write down Sokotoa every time because it's how we remember and don't get the identities confused. Wow, Sokotoa, Sokotoa. And sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The sine of an angle is equal to the opposite of the angle divided by the hypotenuse. And so we're right here. So the opposite of that side is going to be 7. So right away, I'm going to get rid of everything that isn't 7 in the denominator, which is just going to be these two. And then the next thing I want to figure out is what is the hypotenuse. And so we know the hypotenuse is not 10 because that side right there is 10. And so we can go ahead and rid of, get rid of A. So that would be the tangent right there. And then we have to say, okay, is that either one, the root of 149 for the hypotenuse or is it going to be 17? And in any triangle, A plus B needs to be greater than C. And so 10 plus, you know, 7 is 17. So there's no way the hypotenuse can be 17. And so that's going to mean that our hypotenuse must be root 40, 149, which is, you know, the square root of 7 squared plus 10 squared, which also checks out. So that's our first one. Okay, got our next question here. This is in the form of an, AC, an SAT grid in response question. I believe this is a calculator question, so you can go ahead and use a calculator for this one if you like. Okay, let's take a look. So T is a point along AB of triangle ABC where ABC is equal to 90 degrees, so a lot of yada yada there. We're going to make a nice drawing so we can go from English into math, and so we know that ACB is equal to ACB, there is the 90, and they're saying that T is a, a long this side side C, lowercase c here, they don't tell us where it is though. And since they don't tell us where it is, that may make you feel uncomfortable. But for me, that's a really nice sign because then I can just sort of pick something and see what happens. So I'm going to say, well, what about like here? So we know that we're going to split this 90 degree angle somehow. So if this was 30, that would mean that this side right here would be 60. So the sine of 30 degrees minus the cosine of 60 degrees. And I've done this 30, 60, 90 triangle because as I just illustrated, we can actually get some numbers out of those. So let me make a nice little 30, 60, 90 squiggle here. So this is our 30. There's our 1. There's our root 3. And there's our 2. So the sine, or I was going to write Sokotoa. And we know that's so, ka, so it's those two. That's the opposite of the 30 divided by the hypotenuse. So that's 1 over 2. And then the cosine of 60, that's the adjacent, which is 1, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 2. And hey, that's 0. 
So our answer for that one is just zero. Okay, that's it for this video. Every test you take will have something to do with trig principles, and neither of these tests will actually give you the equations for trig identities, so make sure that you've invested the time to memorize these. Look out for our next video on non-right angle triangle trig identities, and in the meantime, remember that what we've covered today will only apply to right angle triangles. Anyway, if you found this material useful, we hope that you will like and share the video and subscribe to Quiet Education. If you require additional instruction, please consider reaching out for some tutoring. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.